Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching the new Scream. Once again starring Neve Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox. And this time directed by the same directors that gave us the excellent 2019 horror, horror comedy, Ready or Not. When it comes to the Scream franchise, it certainly changed the game when it came to horror films in the late 90s and the early 2000s. Afterwards, several films took inspiration from that one and tried to be meta as possible when it came to making new horror films in in that genre. So this film basically turns the meta up to 11 by by taking aim at reboots and re and re sequels and also taking a, a shot at toxic fandom. But let's get to the story, shall we? The story is it's been about a decade since since the events of Scream 4, which has also been the, which in, in universe, is a decade after the events of Stab 7, because of the Stab movies basically being the in-universe equivalent to the Scream movies. But after that that last Stab movie angered a lot of the, fa of the fan base, they it seems that a few killers have decided to create their own re-sequel of their very own by creating a whole bunch of new murders in Westboro. So that brings some legacy characters back into the fold, that being Sidney Prescott, Dewey, and Gail Weathers, played played by Neve Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox. As they come as they find out some connections that some of the cast member new cast members have to some of the old some of the, some of the old killers of the past, and when when we find out that this film happens to mix up its social com social commentary with uh, with the meta humor and so, and some of the most violent kills the franchise has seen yet. So, one thing that I really like about this film is that not only does it acknowledge the events of of all the previous Scream movies, but it also happens to act as closure for a few characters. Obviously saying that would go into spoilers as to, as to which characters I mean, but I do think that several characters do get, do get scenes that either fit their their overall characters based on how they've gone through these films, or they happen to do a good job commenting on current trends, and current and, and current uh, sequels that happen to anger or happen to have a lot of division within the fan base. Everything from Creed to Ghostbusters Afterlife, the new Star Wars movies, they're all used as examples here. On top of that, the the gore in the film is probably the the, the bloodiest and the most creative kills that uh, the franchise has had for a while. Especially considering a lot of the film's kills were mostly just stabs or shootings, it's nice to see that the creativity is is maxed out here when it came to a lot of how how they go down which is not easy to do when your main, when your killer seems determined to really only use a knife for most of the kills. On top of that, I really appreciate how the film how the film manages to uh, tie the the stab movies into the universe while also keeping a lot of the other things about Westboro relatively intact. There's tons of easter eggs for fans of the franchise in almost all the scenes, especially considering some scenes are straight up recreated from the from the original film, not just for the stab recreations, but also for for the for the more self-aware bits, like the scenes where everyone's seen as a suspect and such. Also, there were quite a few cameos that I did appreciate, not only from actors that I'm more familiar with, like Jack Quaid plays one of the characters, and I know him very well as Huey from The Boys, but even James A. Janice from Dead Meat shows up at one point, and probably as one of my favorite cameos that I've seen all year so far. So yeah, the Scream, this Scream movie definitely goes back to the series roots and delivers some, some of the most meta commentary that the series has had in a while, and that's why I love it. Scream 2022 gets a 8 out of 10. See you next time.